Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I have for you 10 questions you always wanted answered and now you get a good answer about them for Affinity Photo. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Thank you for that, let's get started. So the first question is, is Affinity Photo good for beginners? I would say yes, Affinity Photo is really good for beginners because it is simple enough that you can easily learn it, it has an easy to understand interface and goes up to a pretty high level of things you can do, not just adjust your holiday images, but you can also do amazing compositions and art and you can draw and that and all these kind of cool things. So for beginners, Affinity Photo is very nice that isn't too cluttered with functionality or stuff like that. So you can get into photo editing, do a lot of awesome stuff, very good and very affordable. Next question is, should I choose Affinity Photo or Lightroom? Well, Affinity Photo and Lightroom are very different. Lightroom is for adjusting pictures. That means you adjust the colors and the brightness and the contrast and all these kind of things. You can do a little bit of correction if there is like an object you don't like or there's a scratch or a wrong pixel in your picture, stuff like that adjustments, easy adjustments and also organizing your pictures. This is what Lightroom does. But Affinity Photo is a photo editing software. So for example, if you want to replace a sky or you want to put another person into a picture, stuff like that, like real editing with multiple layers and effects and adjustments and all these kind of things, this is what Affinity Photo is for. So that is a completely different thing. But Affinity Photo and Lightroom are compatible with each other. So you can use both together, for example, to adjust colors and stuff like that in Lightroom and then replace the sky in Affinity Photo. So this is how they would work together. Okay, next question is, is Affinity Photo better than Photoshop? No. <laughs> And you might be surprised by that answer because you might think I would say yes, Affinity Photo is much better than Photoshop. The truth is I'm not a fanboy. I'm here to give you honest, straight answers from an expert who is using this software. So Affinity Photo and Photoshop is like comparing a family car to a Formula One racing car. But it doesn't really matter because the truth is, do you need a Formula One racing car? Would you be able to drive it or afford it? The family car has all the things you need in your daily life. And this is exactly what Affinity Photo is. And of course, it is also a lot more affordable because you buy it once. Next question. Do I need all three Affinity or Serif products, which is Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher? Affinity Photo is great for photo editing. Affinity Designer is for illustration and vector graphics. This is built around vectors and curves while Affinity Photo is based on pixels and pixels is what photos are made of. So Publisher is more a layout program. So if you do layout, like for example, a brochure or a book, you need Publisher. If you do illustrations, you need Designer. If you want to do photo editing, you need Affinity Photo. and if you do all three of them, of course, you need all three of them. Let's go to the next question, which is, can I open and save Photoshop files with Affinity Photo? Um, the answer is yes and no. Yes, you can open and save them, but no, because Affinity Photo and Photoshop have different kind of functionality. So if a colleague, for example, sends you a Photoshop file with a lot of editing and effects in them that Affinity Photo doesn't have, Affinity Photo can technically open the file, but it will look completely different and it will not have these effects. Okay. Next one, is Affinity Photo great for raw editing? It can edit raw pictures. I would say the raw editing ability of Affinity Photo is still a bit on the basic side, but that's probably okay because what you're doing is that in the developer persona, you edit raw files, you do the basic adjustments you want to do, and then the rest of the adjustments and the editing and the effects and all the kind of things, this is what you're then doing in Affinity Photo, photo persona. Can you create 
animated GIFs or GIFs, I'm going to say GIFs in Affinity Photo. No, you cannot do that because Affinity Photo does not support animated GIFs. You can export a GIF file, but that GIF file is not animated. Okay. Can you work non-destructive in Affinity Photo? Yes, most of the things you can do in Affinity Photo are non-destructive if you save it as an Affinity Photo file afterwards. That is the important part about that because if you export it as a JPEG or as a PNG or as a GIF or these kind of formats, then of course everything is rendered together into one layer and you can't edit it afterwards, which is the same with Photoshop. All right. Let's go to the next one. Uh, can you use a uh, Photoshop brushes in Affinity Photo? Well, the answer to that is you can import Photoshop brushes, but often they don't apply the settings because Photoshop has a lot of other settings that Affinity Photo doesn't have. So you can import the brush, but then you have to set it up on your own. So it actually works in the similar way or the same way. And with the other things like macros and effects and overlays and mockups and these kind of things, you would really have to check if Affinity Photo has the functionalities that are needed to use that. So for example, for macros, probably not, but you can import brushes and then adjust them to your taste. So that's pretty cool because there is a bazillion free brushes for uh, Photoshop on the internet that you can download. And then we have our 10th question and that is, can I organize my photos in Affinity Photo? No, you cannot because Affinity Photo is a photo editing program. It's not a photo organizing program. Probably your best choice for organizing pictures is Lightroom still because it has a really amazing functionality for that. But you can also have a free alternative like iPhoto or on Windows. It's just called Photos. There's other software like ACDC, also Adobe Bridge, which by the way is a free software. Most people don't know that and Adobe doesn't advertise that, but Adobe Bridge is actually free to download, although you need an Adobe account. These are the 10 questions answered for you. I hope that was useful and you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye.